Okay, I'm here with Alexandra, and we're doing another Millennial Money. And uh, I'm very excited about this program, so thank you for tuning in. This will be one of 10, and we don't know which order they're coming in. So what are, what are some of your questions when people say get out of debt? What comes to your mind? When people say get out of debt, I think about credit card debt, the student loan debt, um, all that negative debt that you, people use for shopping and personal things. And is your idea of debt good or bad? I have a very negative um, idea or connotation towards debt, um, and that's because that's what we were taught in the school system, in the traditional education system, that it's not so great. But because I, have, I work here and I have these resources and I've gone to your seminars, I understand that debt can be powerful and it can be used in a good way and it could generate you money. So uh, for those who are listening, uh, debt is a four-letter word for most people. There are many people in my position, so-called financial gurus, who say be, live totally debt-free. And there's other people who say cut up your credit cards. And you know that's good advice for certain types of people. So you should definitely cut up your credit cards if you don't know, you can't control your spending. You should definitely. But I don't know how people live without credit cards. I don't know how you can check into a hotel, rent a car, or go shopping, go out for dinner, you know, so. But you should cut up your credit cards if you're a shopaholic. That's good advice. And the other thing about debt, there's good debt and bad debt. So this is going to be the lesson today is there's good debt and bad debt. And if you are only have bad debt, which I classify student loan debt as bad debt, the main reason it's bad debt is because it's the worst possible type of debt. You see, if I get into trouble as a businessman with debt, I can declare bankruptcy and I'm clean. But the trouble with student loan debt, you can't do that. You know, it hangs around your neck for the rest of your life. So if you're a student, you shouldn't take on student loan debt unless you absolutely 100% guaranteed that you will commit to graduating. So have you, have you seen a lot of kids drop out of school? Oh, yeah. And so the problem with student loan debt is a person has to know what are they going to study. You know, I have two friends, they're both medical doctors. And they came out of school with $500,000 in medical debt, I mean, in student loan debt. But they paid it off in five years because they're medical doctors. They had high paying jobs. And so they delayed having families and all this. And their whole objective was to pay for becoming a doctor. But I think you have friends who have no idea what they're going to school for. Yeah, so I have this friend and she's changed her major like three different times from business to now nursing. And it's a lot of money and she still has no idea that what she wants to do and she tells me she's like Alex I want to change my major from nursing but I'm already I'm already practically done and I can't pay back this debt so she's stuck with the nursing career and she doesn't even like it you know when I was your age like I, I think I said earlier is that my classmates were making like a hundred ten hundred twenty thousand a year which is not much money mm -hmm. but for my generation if I made 20000 that was a lot of money. Do you know what I mean? It was just out of proportion. So my, we were the highest paid graduates in the world, and my starting pay was about 47000 a year. My classmates were making three times as much as me, but it's a choice we make. I didn't, I didn't really want to do what they did. Yeah. So I had to join a labor union. <laughs> uh, as, as ship's officers, mm -hmm. we had to join the MMMP, Masters, Mates, and Pilots, which meant we were labor union guys. So labor union guys make more money. And nothing personal, but I don't want to be a union member. So I joined Standard Oil of California as a ship, shipping officer, and then I didn't have to join the labor union, but I only got 47,000 a year. That was mm -hmm. the difference. The difference is Standard Oil is still sailing, and a lot of those labor union jobs are gone because the pay got too high. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there's always a good and a bad, and it's hard to understand that when you're younger. But I knew when I was 22 years old, I didn't care if they paid me 100000 a year. I wasn't going to join a union. It was just principle. My father, poor dad, was head of the teachers union. And from what I saw, <laughs> I didn't want to be a teacher. and I didn't want to be a union member. So it was kind of youthful exuberance on things. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, today it's harder because you don't know what, what, what is this mysterious high-paying job. 
And even lawyers today are having a hard time because they don't need that many lawyers, which is a good thing. And there's artificial intelligence, which is replacing a lot of the high-end jobs. Like even accountants today, they don't need accountants because artificial intelligence can do a lot of the work for them. So that's why for your generation, student loan debt, I would say, is possibly one of the most important things you need to decide before you take on the debt. And number one, are you gonna graduate? And number two, what are you gonna graduate as? Exactly. Right? Any comments on that, anything you wanna talk about? So my dream and passion has always been to be an entrepreneur. But when I started studying it, I told my dad it was the last thing I would ever do because I thought that what they were teaching me was what I was gonna be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But these teachers don't, aren't actually practicing what they're teaching. And so they give you this wrong conception of what you're studying. And reality is the traditional education, it's obsolete. What mattered back then does not apply to how you're gonna run your business now. You know, today, if I was in your position, you know, I was pretty clear when I was about 15, I wanted to sail the seas. Uh, I, I sailed huge ships, you know, throughout the world. But that was a dream of a kid. You know, and by the time I was 22, I was tired of it. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to sail the world anymore. So I understand, you know, what it's like to keep, what they call it is finding your way in life, right? Yeah. yeah. That's not easy. Mm -mm. So I commend you guys, and that's why we're doing the, millennial money is because as these programs progress, you're gonna find out, in my opinion, you guys have a harder road to go through than I did. For me, it was really easy. There was a lot of jobs, economy was booming and all this, and uh, it was easier. So you guys have gotta be smarter, okay? So as far as the subject of debt, there's good debt and bad debt. Again, it goes back to the financial statement Income, expense, asset, liability. So debt falls in here. So if you, let's say I'm gonna buy, you know, everybody says I'm gonna buy a house. And everybody says my house is an asset. That's not true. Your house is a liability. I don't care if you have no debt on it or not. A house is a liability. Same as if you have a car. car is a liability, and the reason for that is, as we've talked about earlier, the six words that are basics of financial education, financial intelligence, income, expense, asset, liability, and the two other words are cash flow. So when you look at the average person, they have a job, money comes in here, they pay for their house, and the money goes to a bank through a mortgage. So it's not an asset because the cash is flying, flowing out. So it's a liability. So the definition of liability, does it take money from your pocket? And for an asset, does it put money in your pocket? So when I have a rental property here, it puts money in my pocket. So if I live in the house, it's a liability because even if I have no debt on it, I still have taxes, depreciation, repairs, and upkeep, insurance, and all this. When I rent a property, I've done a good job buying it and structuring it. Every month, it sends me money. So I started off when I was 25. I had a little one-bedroom condo, and it put 25 bucks in my pocket. It was a start. So this was good debt. You see, I, this. The debt also went out and paid, but it also put $25 in my pocket. So net, net, I was making money from my little house. So today, my wife and I own 6,500 of them. And every month, 6,500 houses put money in my pocket. My, my people who live in them love me and all this because they have a place to live. But all of this comes from debt. So we don't, oh, we have, they're 100% finance here. It's all debt. So this is good debt. And what makes it good debt is, are the two most important words. 
cash flow. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Any comments on this? So numerous people my age actually think debt is horrible. And you just showed us a perfect example of cash flow and how debt can generate income. And many entrepreneurs use this formula to make money on a day-to-day -day basis. So what most people do is they have student loan debt, SL, and that debt is going out this way. You know, it doesn't put any money in your pocket. You can say, well, I have a job. Well, that's still you working for it. So I don't work for any of this money here. I do this job once, set the deal up. Every year I add more and more and more of it. I'm borrowing money from here. It's coming here and going this way. So the debt is putting money in my pocket and bad debt is taking money from my pocket. So the, the problem is if you're gonna use debt, you've gotta be much smarter than this person here. You've got to be very, very smart. That's why I took real estate classes when I was 25, and I've never stopped taking real estate classes. Because you buy a piece of real estate and you make a mistake, this turns into a liability. Yeah, this, if, I'm, if, if I get the renter leaves the place, this goes here that fast. And the cash flows that way. Okay, it's going out of my pocket. So it has nothing to do with real estate, it has nothing to do with the car, that there was student loan. It has to do with these two words here. So good debt, again, is debt when I borrow for this and it puts money in my pocket. If I had a car and I borrowed money from it and somebody rented for me as an Uber driver or something and it put money in my pocket, it would be an asset. My wife and I have a boat and you know most boats lose money, but our boat makes money because it's in a charter. You know, people rent my boat all the time. So it has nothing to do whether it's a boat, student loan debt, a house, a car, or whatever. It has to do with these two words here. And so most of the time, you know, you've had accounting classes. They don't talk much about this, do they? This is something they never mentioned to me in college. Why is that, you think? Like you mentioned before, I mean, there's people that are actually teaching students something that they don't apply in their daily life, something that they barely have knowledge about and they only learn through a textbook. But you've, you, you have, you've taken accounting classes, right? Yeah, exactly, I did. You made A's in it? Well, I did finally get a high grade the second time around, but that was because I had a real accountant teaching me the real applications of accounting as opposed to a fake teacher, right? So your advisor, Tom Wheelwright, taught me in one hour what I could have learned the entire semester with this one teacher that wasn't even accountant in his real life. A big lesson for you is that it's nothing to do with the house, the car, the student loan. It has to do with where's the cash flowing. If the cash is flowing into your income statement, into your pocket, it's an asset. It's good debt. But if it's taking money from your pocket, it's bad debt. About yeah. debt, there's good debt and bad debt. Any comments on that? Well, I think just like Trump, you know how to apply the rules of debt, and he calls himself the king of debt, right? If you're going to be successful, like whether you're an employee or entrepreneur, you've got to control the direction of your cash flow. So look at most people here. We've talked about it earlier. They get a job, and the cash flows out here. It goes to the government. Called taxes. Okay. Trump doesn't do this. I don't do this legally. The reason is because we're entrepreneurs, not employees. Employees have this, entrepreneurs don't. Because it's a type of asset. Any other thing? I'm good. So what would you like to say to the young millennials listening to this? I'd say don't be afraid of debt. And if you know how to use it, use it. Good debt puts? Money in your pocket. Could a credit card be good debt? Well, it just depends what you spend the money on, right? So if you spent it on something that's going to produce income for you, like an asset, then it's good debt. But if you spend it on, let's say, a jacket that you wanted from Burberry, then it's not. First property there it was in Maui, Hawaii in the 1970s. I bought it with a credit card. <laughs> wow property was $18,000, my first, for, for, but I've taken several real estate classes. And so I knew what to look for. I found this one property, it took a long time. When I found it, I just broke out my credit card and bought it, and it put $25 in my pocket. It went from this little dinky little thing, this is years ago, $25. It was good debt. 
I wish I had never sold it. I don't, you know, those, it was a big mistake to sell it because today it's probably worth four or five hundred thousand. And um, that's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't flip properties, you know, I don't like to do that stuff. So anything else? So good debt, what? Money in your pocket. And bad debt, what? It takes money out of your pocket. And that's all there is. Yeah. Thank you.